The last pathway of lipid transport which I'm going to talk about is the reverse cholesterol transport pathway. And this pathway is distinct and very different from the exogenous and endogenous lipid transport pathways in that it, the primary function here is to remove cholesterol from peripheral cells and tissues, returning this cholesterol to the liver for processing and metabolism. The underlying principle behind reverse cholesterol transport is to keep levels of cholesterol in the peripheral circulation as well as in peripheral tissues at its lowest concentrations possible because generally excess cholesterol in the periphery is very dangerous and is a underlying uh, trigger for the development of atherosclerosis as well as uh, site-specific inflammation depending on where the cholesterol buildups are occurring. This diagram is illustrating some of the specific protein transporters involved in the reverse cholesterol transport pathway. Um, specifically the ABC transporters, ABC standing for ATP binding cassette and then each of these transporters is then further designated with its label either A1, G1, uh, G5 slash G8. They all have similar function however they uh, differ slightly depending on the cells in which they are expressed and in terms of the particular lipoprotein in which they'll interact with. So. For example, ABCA1, uh, which is expressed ubiquitously in the body at various tissues, um, in the liver, in the gut, um, highly expressed in uh, macrophage, as well as other tissues, ABCA1 will recognize uh, nascent HDL. Upon association with ABCA1, nascent HDL particles will, will then receive cholesterol from the cell that it's associated with, increasing its cholesterol content. As the HDL particles begin to increase in diameter and size, they will then begin to associate with ABCG1, which is primarily responsible for recognizing lipid-rich HDL particles and further increasing their cholesterol content through direct transport from inside the cell externally to the HDL particle. So I've shown you here uh, both of these illustrated on the liver, but these particular proteins are present in other tissues throughout the body and uh, we're going to talk about them primarily next as uh, transporters of cholesterol in macrophage. However, by way of further explanation, I'd just like to illustrate that there are other ABC transporters which are related to cholesterol transport and these include ABCG5 and G8. ABCG5 and G8 are highly expressed in the liver, specifically near the conicular membranes and these serve the function of exporting cholesterol from hepatocytes into the hepatobiliary secretions. So the 9 to 10 percent content of hepatobiliary secretions, which is cholesterol, comes from the act of transport of this free cholesterol from the hepatocyte into those secretions. These ABC transporters are also highly expressed in the gut and they are in the reverse orientation of most of the transporters in that they will pump free cholesterol or other sterols out of the enterocyte back into the lumen of the small intestine. While this may seem counterintuitive to lipid absorption, this process is in place to prevent the excess absorption of sterols from, from plant sources. As plant sterols are very structurally similar to cholesterol, they can interfere and participate in some of the metabolic processes in which cholesterol takes part. Our digestion of lipids has evolved to the point in which we, while consuming roughly equal amounts of cholesterol and plant sterol in our diets, we only absorb approximately 1% of plant sterols versus 60 to 70% of the cholesterol that's present in our uh, small intestine. Sterol transport into the body is controlled by another transporter, uh, which is the NPC1L1, which uh, is responsible for transporting cholesterol from the intestinal lumen into the enterocyte. So there is a system in place to conserve and reabsorb sterol cholesterol which is lost. Again this transporter is highly specific to cholesterol and less specific to the other sterols. So that's an example of the ABC transporters uh, expressed in particular tissues and I've used those um, as examples of how the process of cholesterol leaving the body occurs. Now let's turn to an example of reverse cholesterol transport in the periphery where here this cartoon is illustrating um, how LDL present in circulation can migrate from the vascular lumen into the intima, the intima space. And once in this space, 
it's susceptible to being oxidized or uh, modified by either macrophage or other circulating enzymes which can modify the ApoB100 and or the phospholipid membrane. Once this occurs, this particular LDL may or may not be recognized by receptors of the liver, therefore it could remain in circulation or it would be recognized by cells, immune cells, particularly macrophage, as a foreign body and it would be phagocytized and broken down and then this excess cholesterol has to be stored within the macrophage. This storage if it goes on unchecked and uh, if this process of LDL conversion and uh, endocytosis occurs at high rates macrophages then become dysfunctional and develop into foam cells which have high concentrations of cholesterol ester stored in various vesicles within the cell. This whole process then further triggers the recruitment of other immune cells uh, causing adhesion molecule expression to occur in the endothelium and the recruiting and migration of more immune cells and thereby perpetuating this cycle between oxidized LDL being or normal LDL being taken up by macrophage and conversion to foam cells. This is the initial trigger in the development of atherosclerotic plaques. So the reverse cholesterol transport system is very important because macrophage and foam cells both produce the ABC transporters required for HDL to remove this cholesterol ester and find its way back into circulation and removal from circulation at the liver. So both macrophage containing high levels of cholesterol and foam cells are capable of tr removing this cholesterol uh, and exporting it via HDL back to the liver. So some key points on reverse cholesterol transport. HDL is secreted in a dis discoidal form from the liver and the gut. It becomes spherical and more uh, lipid rich in nature as it acquires cholesterol through circulation. Free cholesterol is picked up by HDL from tissues and, and immune cells such as monocytes and macrophage. Free cholesterol picked up by the HDL particles is then esterified uh, with the help of lecithin cholesterol acyltransferase in plasma. Cholesterol esters can be transported between uh, lipid-rich lipoproteins such as VLDL and colomicrons into HDL particles and cholesterol esters returned to these particles. Another interesting point which I'll explain in more detail shortly is the fact that cholesterol esters can be transported from HDL particles into lipid-rich lipoproteins such as colomicrons and VLDL particles. This enhances the activity, the reverse cholesterol transport activity of HDL in that it can transport some of this cholesterol that which it's scavenged from the peripheral tissues into other lipoproteins which will be eventually returned to the liver. Uh, in doing so uh, it receives in return triglyceride uh, which keeps the HDL particles in a lipid rich state. Therefore this process of transfer is facilitated by cholesterol ester transfer protein. HDLs are taken up directly by the liver primarily by scavenging receptor class B type 1. Cholesterol efflux from foam cells is regulated by the transporters ABC A1 and G1 and generally HDL cholesterol or HDL particles are recognized as being anti-atherogenic lipoproteins. So just a final note on the transfer of lipid between lipoproteins where you have the ability of HDL uh, to transport its primary lipid being cholesterol ester and as well its ApoC and ApoE apolipoproteins into other lipoprotein particles specifically colomicrons, VLDL and even LDL. And what occurs via the facilitation of CETP is the removal of cholesterol ester and transfer into these lipoprotein particles and in return triglyceride is transferred back into HDL. So that concludes a short summary of reverse cholesterol transport. Uh, next we'll look at linking and next we'll explore how these pathways all link into one another and how they form a complete system of lipid transport in our bodies.